everyone, it's Bobby from Dig Coding here and this is the 30th and final video in the building and launching a real Django website series. So, if you have been following on then following us then I would like to thank you because um, I really appreciate the support. This has been a really interesting playlist to create. Actually, I needed to get the playlist out there because I didn't have a website. So when I started this YouTube channel, I had no website and I thought, right, let's document the process of building one step by step. It's taken 30 videos. Two of those are just recap videos, so 28 videos in total, and approximately eight hours of content. So if you were to follow along, you can build a website from scratch, blank canvas, all the way to the point where it is live and looking gorgeous in about eight hours. You know, if you're doing it slowly, it could take two working days, right? That's not bad, this is a Django website. So it's, a, it's, it's Python in a Django web framework on a DigitalOcean server, and it's got Postgres database two Postgres databases. You know, this is a good, solid, scalable website that we've built here in a couple of days, right? So not too shabby. So I'm just creating this video because I want to just cap off the playlist. I want to do a similar video to what I do in video 15, which is just up here. I won't go through the same content as what I did in video 15. So I just looked at the previous 14 videos in that video. Um, but just around that, first half off, you know, we were setting up the project, doing our views, models, URLs, and we're just configuring Django, getting it all up onto a server on DigitalOcean and presenting a coming soon page. You know, we had a fancy pants admin page and things like that, but essentially it was just a bog standard, ugly little old website that we had live at the end of the first half of this tutorial. Second half was all about adding some flavor. So we've downloaded a template. If you look at my screen here, uh, where are we? This is the playlist. Um, we are recap. So we downloaded the template. So in this video here, number number sixteen, we downloaded the template. We found a template online using a few different websites. Downloaded it. Then we added that pre-made template to our project. Then we start stringing it all together into our static files. In in this video here. We then started using partial. So we started dissecting the template up. So writing HTML and CSS and JavaScript from scratch is, is a skill. Obviously, it really is. But it can take such a long time to build a website. It actually works. It's functional and responsive, right? So it looks good on all device sizes. However, you can just buy a template online and tweak it as necessary. Add your own imagery, your own branding, your own colors, blah, 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 and your own logos. And all of a sudden, you've got this gorgeous looking website. And it's cost you like 30 bucks, right? So you're saving all of this time. I'm not adverse to building your own website from scratch, but just don't write off buying a template because one template, an identical template to a competitor, could look very, very different with your own branding, your own fonts, and your own images, and your own sorry, sections put in different orders on the website. So don't be adverse to it. Just do whatever you need to do for your own project, right? So that's why we've used a template. It speeds things up massively. We've then messed around with a header and a footer, so we've got the navigation going right on the website. We've got a footer looking beautiful. Uh, we then created a job scheduler. So we didn't need to, we should have probably done this in the first half of the tutorial, but we did it in the back half. We wrote a job scheduler. So we wanted the, the means to be able to run code in the background of our website without the need of having to click go or a user interaction or a trigger. So this is running continuously now. Every 20 minutes we're making a call to YouTube, right? So fantastic. We're getting metadata from videos back into our database and we can do something with it. So that was the job scheduler. The next one we wrote the actual API. So we got the API key from Google, we wrote an API and we tied it all in and strung it all together with our model so we can actually store that data in our media model, which is in our database. And then um, we went through our HTML document. So this is the bottom of the page what I've got uploaded already. Um, but we uploaded our HTML, sorry, our images to a home page. So we downloaded images from Shutterstock. We tweaked the size, we reduced them, so compressed them so they weren't as memory heavy and we added them to our static files so that we can now present our own images. But then what we did, we, uh, we realized that our contact form wasn't quite up to scratch, so we needed a way of submitting contact form from users so that we, we, we can log that data and do something with it, like send emails and, and register that contact in a CMS or something like that. So we, um, we then configured the back end of our website so we could handle model forms and form submissions and then we added some JavaScript to the front end so we can actually submit this form using Ajax. So um, the whole page doesn't reload. So you can submit a form, 
process the data without the need to reload a whole web page. And you can then add and change data on a web page, um, like I say, without reloading anything, which is kind of a modern way of doing it. Uh, we then added some SEO, so we went into the header and we added some meta tags. We added descriptions, keywords, canonicals. We added alt tags to our images. We added structured data. So that was all good. So by the end of that video, we had an SEO optimized on-site SEO optimized on our website. So then we got to the end. So then we got to the end of the project really, and it was all about finishing up. Um, just you know, rounding off the edges, making sure that our website was looking good and fantastic on all device sizes. Um, and then on those device sizes, if it rendered slightly different, were links hidden, was other stuff being shown. So we kind of then identified a little, some little bugs that needed ironing out. So we did that. And then the final video, video number 29, we, the link to it is just up here below. Um, what we did is we uploaded all of that information onto our production server. So now the world can see our website. We did run into a few issues in that video. So I said that you need to be careful dragging files from your local directory straight into the server using the um, SFTP panel, because what you end up doing is you overwrite information that's already in the server. Now your server is, is held together, is robust, but you start changing settings and it all falls down like a, a house of cards, right? So be very, very, very careful when dragging things over to your server. I made a mistake during the video, right? So what I did, I um, dragged over the settings that INI file, it has all my API keys, all of my passwords. And what that did is, because my uh, development server doesn't have my Google, sorry, my AWS AWI, doesn't have my AWS API keys. So I dragged over a file and it essentially made those API keys disappear. And when I tried to use the Python manage.py collect static, it just did not work. So be very careful when you're dragging files over to your server. That's all I'm trying to say. When you do it, you restart G Unicorn or Green Uni Unicorn, and then you restart Nginx and boom, it all triggers, it all works. Make sure that your maintenance mode is switched off unless you are doing something in the background, otherwise it would just say coming soon or maintenance mode. But other than that, we are done. Wow, that was some sort of journey, right? That took 10 hours-ish. I haven't really added it up, but it's about 10 hours of solid coding to get from a very blank, black, empty canvas to the point where we've got a lovely website online. So let me just open up our website if I go into diddemo.com, as of today's date, it looks like this. It loads up fantastically fast. I've got the um, the branding is on point. I didn't actually need to change any of the coloring. I could do in another video, but that's not really part of this tutorial. But we've got the, the fonts are on point. We've got the images that we've got the licensing for. You know what, I just think it looks fantastic. Uh, just for a demo website, it looks really good. Everything works. It's not quite as responsive as I'd like, but I'll fix that eventually. Um, yeah, this is the website we've built. So if you want to build your own Python Django Web Framework website, then this is the playlist for you, okay? So if you haven't followed along and this is the first time you've seen a video, jump into video one, the link to which is up here. Follow through all of the steps. It's a rocky ride. Um, it's a bumpy ride, you know, I have all sorts of problems. I have mic issues, lighting issues, I have typos. You know, it's not a smooth ride by, by a long shot, but this is a very real tutorial. You have really been following me along from the get-go to the point where the website is live. So do every single step in order, get it online, get it on your server, and good luck. I wish you all the best. If this is the first time that you visit my channel, then welcome, obviously, welcome. But can you please remember to subscribe and to like the video, share the content, as it's a massive help, it really helps me. And um, yeah, good luck, what else is there? So uh, yeah, if you wanna support the channel, I've got a Patreon page, link into my in the description below, please click that, please become a patron and make a pledge. Pledges are massively welcome, it helps me improve the quality of these videos and increase the rate in which I can create them, which is fantastic. So that's it, that's the end of this playlist. Thank you very much for watching and following along. I really appreciate it. I will be seeing you in the next video and hopefully the next playlist. Thank you, goodbye.